All right, well, good evening, everybody. Good to see you. So glad that you're joining us. Everybody joining here on in person. Can Are you okay? And everybody tuning in online, we're so glad that you're joining us as well. Uh, really excited about this week of prayer and fasting. Um, I don't know if you've ever, well, you may have prayed before. But sometimes I find that people haven't fasted before. Uh, and so, one, I'm just glad that you're exploring it. I'm glad that you're checking it out. I'm glad that you're uh, stepping into something that might be unfamiliar or new. I do want to kind of draw your attention to something um, as we kind of get started. Is on our app, if you go and download the app at Elevation Church STL, you can find... Our app there, and if you'll press on more, which is all the way to the right, uh, if you see the little indicator that says more, what happens is two, two uh, buttons basically come up. One is guide and the other is resources. And if you press on resources, you can find both Bible resources, you can find prayer and fasting resources. And so if you click on prayer and fasting, uh, it has a prayer list that you can use like in the mornings or if you'd like to just have some music on as you're praying. There's also a prayer guide there. Um, these prayer guides are available to everybody. We have, uh, we have the ones that are in, in um, what is this called, paper? Yes, we call this paper. And, uh, and so we have this available. If you're here in person, there are some over here. Um, and then if you'd like a digital format of that, you can do that on the app as well. And so when you click on prayer guide, you'll see this guide right there in a digital format. And then there's also one section there on how to fast. And so if you've never fasted before, uh, it gives you a few suggestions on how to maybe approach that. I hear all the time that, you know, that people maybe can't because of certain medicines they're on or certain things that are going on, you know. And so it's totally okay with God uh, because here's the thing. God is interested in us creating the space that he then can fill. And so sometimes I say, well, if you can't do that, well, why don't you maybe fast that hour of television and replace it with Bible reading, you know, do something that you're just creating more room. Because one of the things I would say is it really doesn't make a lot of sense just to fast and not add God in. Like it doesn't make any sense. It's just some religious thing you're going through. Uh, if anything, the goal is to connect more with God. And so I want to encourage you as you think about your fast that you would think about how can I create more time for him. All right, well, glad that you came tonight and glad that everybody else is joining us uh, online as well. Uh, excited about this week, excited about what God is going to do. I hope that your expectations are high uh, because I believe that God wants to speak to his people. I believe he wants to intersect uh, any space or any opportunity that we create for him. And, uh, and so I hope that you're excited about it and I hope that you're excited about what God is going to do uh, this week. I wanted to start here, um, and this won't be on your screen or on the screens, but I wanted to start really quick in the book of Genesis chapter 1. Now, I know that you probably have read this. If you haven't, uh, that's okay. I'll read it to you. You don't necessarily need to look it up unless you want to. But uh, I wanted to read something out of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Perhaps you've heard that before. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and, and what that means is that God is the creator. He's the creator of all things. Then in verse 2, it says, the Bible says, the earth was without form. Okay, the earth was without form. In other words, that God created everything out of nothing. That's what makes him unique and different. Because he has the ability to create out of nothing. Like we have the ability to create out of something. God has the ability to create it out of nothing. And so he looks at this formless void. And the Bible says that he begins to speak. And as he begins to speak, what happens is that the things that he was speaking were coming into being. 
Yes. And so he starts to talk about the, the, the oceans and the mountains and the, and the, the plants. And, and then eventually he gets to these animals, right? And then he gets to people. So what God does is he, 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 he takes this formless environment and he forms it. And then out of that, what does he do? He starts to fill it. Do you see what I'm talking about? There's a spiritual principle here I want you to get at the very beginning of this week of prayer and fasting. And that is that God formed something before he filled it. He formed it, then he filled it. And what I'm trying to get at is that our God is a filler, not a forcer. And so when you create space for God to fill, he will fill it. But you've got to form it before he fills it. And so when you think about your week, when you think about this month, when you think about creating greater space and time for God, the goal is to create the form of it and then fill it. See, God wants to fill whatever space you want to create. Uh, I sometimes talk about this, like I, I had this recent experience in my own life where I was thinking about our church finances and one of the things that that I felt like God said is, if you'll form it, I'll fill it. That's what I heard him say. And so I told our, our board that we were going to form a bank account, a certain bank account that would be dedicated to just savings. Okay? Just savings. And if you know the history of our church, you know, because we were a church plant, we lived pretty fast and loose for a long time trying to get this thing off the ground. But one of the things that God really started to speak to me about is how important it was to create some margin. And so I looked at the budget and I said, you know, we just don't have it. But God said, well, do you trust me? And what he said was, do you trust me enough to form it? So what I did is I said to our accountant, hey, we're going to form it. Matter of fact, I don't even see how we're going to make it, but I'm, we're going to form it. So we formed this account and we started to put money into it. And by the end of the year, not only did we over, do way over than what we originally planned, what was so amazing is that as we got to the end of the year, we had even more than enough than we ever thought we would. I mean, we finished the year with over, I believe, 100 grand more than we finished last year. I mean, it's amazing. And so what I'm getting at is that when we form something, God can fill it. Because when you form it, you're really saying in faith, I believe that you're going to do something. I believe you're going to show up. And so what I'm asking you to do before I get to kind of the point of the night, I'm really kind of talking about the point of the week, is that what is it that you need to form right now in your life that you're expecting God to show up and fill, that you desire for him to show up, that you have faith enough to believe that he's going to show up? So maybe it's you're going to form, uh, I'm going to form a, a morning ritual where I meet with you. Or I'm going to form uh, some evening ritual. Uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever you're going to do, I'm going to fast something, God. So I'm going to form it so you can fill it. So I just want you to keep that spiritual principle in your mind as you think about this coming week, okay? And then finally, as we come to... This evening, the question that I've been asking you guys for, uh, I guess two weeks ago, I asked you this question. How in love with God, how in love with Jesus are you right now, really? Not, not how, how, how in love with him were you a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, but how in love with Jesus are you right now, really? I was reading something in Deuteronomy, and this will be on your screens. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Perhaps you've heard this, but this is uh, what's called the Shema. Uh, and, and that's just a, a, a term that Jewish people would use uh, to describe something very, very important to the people of Israel. And I was going to read this to you, um, but I'm going to back up just a little bit before I get to verse 4, which I know you guys have on the screen. Um, but, but let me read this to you. Just listen, it's okay. Now this is the commandment 
And these are the statues and judgments with the, which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. And so the people of Israel were moving towards the promised land. And Moses is laying down for the people something very important. And so he says in verse 2, that you may fear the Lord your God and keep all of his statutes and commandments, which I command you, you and your sons and your grandsons, all the days of your life that watch this that your days may be prolonged. Verse three, therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God and your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. What great promises. And then listen, two verses for tonight. Hear, O Israel, Israel, this is the Shema, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now this was important because they lived in a polytheistic environment. And so the idea that somehow there was only one God was a big deal. It was a big deal. It was a monotheistic idea that, 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 that most people in that world did not fully understand. And so, so they, they, they laid this down as one of the most important things for them to remember, that God was one. One God, no other gods, no other idolatry, so to speak, was allowed. And we've talked about that in our lives. As we come to this week of prayer and fasting, I sometimes have to ask myself, what, are, there, are there idols in my life? Are there things that are sitting on the throne of my heart that were never intended to sit there? And it can be anything, anything that's a good thing that becomes an ultimate thing can become an idol. And so I ask you this question, how in love with Jesus are you really? How in love with him? Are you in love with him enough to be willing to lay down any idols that you might have currently in your life? Are you willing to release them to God? Are you willing to give them away and say, you know what, God, you're right. I've allowed this thing or this person or this situation on the throne of my heart for way too long and I just want to give it to you because I need you back on the throne. I need you back on the throne of my life. Good question for all of us to answer. And then finally here in verse four, or I mean verse five, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Come on all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength. How in love with God are you right now? Do you love him with all of your heart? Do you love him with all of your soul? Do you love him with all of your mind? And here's the great thing about a week of prayer and fasting is it gives us a chance to get that right. Because isn't it true in our lives we drift? You've heard me talk about the drift before where you're swimming in the ocean outside your hotel, having a great old time. And the next thing you know, you look up and your hotel's a mile away because you've drifted. And so what I'm asking you to do is look at it, examine it, really begin to press in and ask the Lord, God, where have I drifted? Where have I allowed things on my, the throne of my heart? Uh, where have I allowed fear or uh, anxiety or worry or uh, control? Come on. Or wh where have I allowed these things to govern when they never intend, God never intended for these things to govern in my life? So where, where, where? I think those are great questions for us to consider tonight as we spend some time in prayer. So just so you know how this works for all of us online and everybody in person, the way that we do this is that we spend a good amount of time just in personal prayer. And part of the reason we give you the prayer guides is to help prompt your prayers. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes what happens to me when I'm praying is my mind begins to go other places. You ever had this problem? And unless you're extremely disciplined, uh, 
what can happen is that your mind goes to all these things that you need to be thinking about or, you know. And so I'll give you two suggestions if you struggle with that. Grab a prayer guide and allow the prayer guide to guide your prayers. Pick one of the, the structures that are in here, like the tabernacle prayer or the Lord's prayer or some of these prayers, and they will actually create a form in your mind that you can walk through and it'll help you from being distracted. Another thing to consider is if you find yourself distracted when you're praying, uh, have a little notepad next to you. And then let's say that thing comes up that says, uh, I need to get milk at the grocery store, or, oh, I need to send that email, okay? Just write it on the piece of paper so that it goes somewhere. Because then it's there, it's kept, it's safe, you can focus on what you need to do. And depending on how distracted you get, you might have a few of those. But what you'll also begin to notice is that as you do that, you'll start to hear God more readily, and then you can start to write down what he's actually saying. And start maybe writing those things down as you're hearing from God, as you spend time in his presence. So use these guides as a tool to help teach and train yourself how to pray. Because all of us can pray. Pastor, do you mean all of us? Yes, all of us. All of you, come on, can pray out loud. Ah, what? Like literally, you can get to a place in your life where I say to you, hey, I need you to pray right now, go ahead. And you don't go, <laughs> all of us can do that. And you know what I love about prayer and fasting? Weeks of prayer and fasting? It gives you a chance to practice. And you get to practice with people that care about you. They're not going to laugh at you. They're not going to make fun of you. They want you to practice. Because if we don't practice in here and get better, we will never do it out there. And so when you have a coworker that needs prayer, you're not going to speak up. And so we need to learn how to do it. And so this is a great time for us to practice with one another. So what I want to encourage you to do is take time to stretch yourself a little bit as we do this. All right. So we'll have about 25 minutes of personal prayer time and you'll be able to use these guides. There's some other things that you can look at in there if that'll be helpful to you. Uh, I also encourage you don't just sit. Sometimes when we think about prayer, it's just like I just sit and I, I, I look holy. I feel holy. And as long as I don't move, I'm good. See, I don't see that a lot in the Bible. Matter of fact, when people prayed, they were walking. You know, they were doing all kinds of things. They were, they were praying in their mind and talking to somebody as they were doing it. Like they were doing two things at once. So I encourage you to walk around, stand up, sit down if you need to, get on your knees. Whatever you need to do to posture yourself before a holy God, do that. I like to walk around because it keeps me from getting kind of nodding off, keeps me from getting distracted. Uh, it allows me to be more engaged when my body is engaged. So I encourage you to do that. Okay, I think that's enough for today. I'll keep kind of pressing on some of this stuff to teach you, but we'll have about 20 minutes or 25 minutes of personal prayer. Then after that, we'll come back for some corporate time and we'll spend time praying together as a group uh, and we will be out of here by 7.30. So we go 6.30 to 7.30 every evening except Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. All right? All right. Well, let me pray for us. Um, and then what I want to do is we're going to do it a little different today. I'm going to pray for us. And then as we do, I'm going to um, have them play two worship songs that I'd encourage you to participate in. Okay? And then after that, just spend some time in your personal prayer, okay? So we're going to do it a little different than we did, uh, than, than sometimes we do. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for an opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you for an opportunity just simply to be with you. Lord, we need more of you. We need more of your presence in our life. We need more of your peace. We need more of your heart in our heart. We, need, we just need more. And so, Lord, as John the Baptist said, God, that we would decrease and that you would increase. Lord, as we spend time with you tonight, we pray 
that your spirit would come and fill us. God, would you speak to people tonight? Would they hear your voice, maybe for the first time in a long time? God, we need to hear from you. God, we need to hear from you. And so, Lord, we make ourselves available. We make ourselves available to hear from you today.